Hi, I'm Rod Anderson. Today, people are prepared to go to any lengths to cast doubts about the historicity of the Bible and the credentials of Christianity. Anti-theists, atheists, agnostics are today making an assertion that Jesus did not really exist, that he is a myth from the days of yore. Timothy Freck is one such man. Listen as he pontificates on the existence of Jesus. What we have here is a, a myth which has been literalized. Once you see that, then the whole history starts to fall into a new pattern. People think, oh, why would anyone write a myth? But it's the language of the ancient world. So it's like asking, why do people write science fiction stories? Why did someone make The Matrix? Well, because it's a powerful story which transforms you when you come into contact with it. And it is made up of little motifs which have been taken from all over the place, put together in a new order. Well, that's what myth is in the ancient world. That's what the Jesus story is. Timothy Freck says Jesus is a myth, but he also says when people watch the movie The Matrix, they are transformed. I don't feel the necessity to comment on this statement. Simply bring it to your attention will serve my purpose, if you know what I mean. Another critic by the name of Kenneth Humphreys also attacks the existence of Jesus. What did we actually know about Jesus Christ the man? What we don't find is this person who appears as some sort of spectre within that that historical tableau called Jesus. He doesn't have a mark at all. Now that is a dilemma for those who believe in him because on the one hand he supposedly overturned the, the world, it turned the world upside down and triggered off this massive movement but on the other hand he leaves no trace in the historical record. Kenneth Humphreys says that Jesus leaves no trace in the historical record. So either Kenneth Humphreys' statement is true or it's false. Either he is ignorant of the facts or is intentionally lying. I'm going to let you judge. However, I must say that these are troubling statements. Worse still, dishonest, because even the most superficial investigations re reveals that there is overwhelming evidence that the New Testament is an accurate and trustworthy historical document founded on independent, non-biblical testimonies that corroborates its statements. This is also the case when referring to the historicity of Jesus Christ. Let me just give you some examples. This is from Tacitus, the Roman senator, and his historian who lived in the first century, the same century as Jesus lived. And here Tacitus reports on Emperor Nero's decision to blame the Christians for the fire that destroyed Rome in 64 AD. He says, Nero fastened the guilt on a class hated for their abominations called Christians by the populace. Christus, from whom the name had its origin, suffered the extreme penalty during the reign of Tiberius at the hands of Pontius Pilatus. What we learn from this ancient reference to Jesus and the early church is that Christians derived their early name from a historical person called Christus or Christ. He is said to have suffered the extreme penalty, obviously alluding to the Roman method of execution known as crucifixion, and this is said to have occurred during the reign of Tiberius Caesar and sentenced by Pontius Pilate. This confirms much of what the Bible tells us about the time of Jesus' death. It was during the reign of Tiberius Caesar and the Roman governor Pontius Pilate was the one who sentenced him to death. In fact, we can go to further evidence from Pliny the Younger, the Roman governor of Bithynia, who refers to Christians and Christ in a letter to the Roman Emperor Trajan dated around 112 AD. He writes, they were in the habit of meeting on a certain fixed day before it was light, when they sang an alter alternate verses, a hymn to Christ, as to a God, and bound themselves by a solemn oath not to do any wicked deeds, but never to commit any fraud, theft or adultery, never to falsify their word. Here in this document dated of 112 AD is a clear reference to the historicity of Jesus Christ and that Christ did in fact exist. We also have the writings of the Jewish historian Flavius Josephus who lived in the first century and who wrote the following. About this time there lived Jesus, a wise man, if indeed one ought to call him a man, for he was one who performed surprising deeds and was a teacher of such people as accept the truth 
gladly. He won many Jews over and many of the Greeks. He was the Messiah. And when upon the accusation of the principal men, Pilate had condemned him to a cross, those who had first come to love him did not cease. He appeared to them spending a third day restored to life. For the prophets of God had foretold these things and a thousand other marvels about him. And the tribe of Christians so called after him are not extinct to this day. Jesus and the Christians are both identified in this historical reference, but in this last passage there is a clear reference to the resurrection of Jesus for Joseph or from Josephus, and I quote this. He says, He appeared to them spending a third day restored to life. Obviously, an historical reference to the veracity of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, we can also go to the Jewish rabbinical writings, which were written between 65 AD and 200 AD, which speak of Jesus. But the compelling attraction for me in this statement is that it comes from the enemies of Jesus. It says, on the eve of the Passover, Yeshua was hanged for 40 days before the execution took place. A herald cried, he is going to be stoned, he was going forth to be stoned because he has practiced sorcery and enticed Israel to apostasy. Now, let's examine this passage. It says, on the eve of the Passover, Yeshua was hanged because he practiced sorcery. Yeshua is the Hebrew form of Jesus. But what does the passage mean by saying that Jesus was hanged? Well, this is a reference to Jesus' crucifixion. This document of the rabbis tells us why Jesus was crucified. It was because he practiced sorcery and enticed Israel to apostasy. It's interesting to me that both accusations have close parallels in the New Testament. The charge of sorcery is similar to the Pharisees' charge or accusations against Jesus that he cast out demons by Beelzebub, the ruler of demons, in Luke chapter 11, verse 8, 18. In fact, this charge actually confirms the New Testament accounts of Jesus' supernatural miracles, that there was just so much evidence, there was just too much evidence in the first two centuries to deny it. Likewise, the charge of enticing Israel to apostasy parallels Luke's account of the Jewish leaders who charged Jesus with sedition before Pontius Pilate in Luke 23 verse 1. Again, this charge corroborates the New Testament record of Jesus' powerful teaching ministry. Now, we could go to others who lived in the first two, two centuries who testified the existence of Jesus, such as Suetonius, Lucian, Celsus, etc. And even the fourth century emperor Julian. But the question that I want to ask you now, was Kenneth Humphrey's statement true or false when he said Jesus leaves no trace in the historical record? No. This is absolutely false, and he intentionally ignores the clear testimony of historians, and the trend among atheists and enemies of the Bible today is their attempt to rewrite history, to fabricate the facts to suit their bias, and intentionally mislead others. But you don't have to be misled or deceived. And if you go to YouTube, type in my name, Rod Anderson, and the title, title Seven Mind-Blowing Prophecies, and there I give vital evidence for the historicity of Jesus and the evidence for, for the inspiration of God's holy word, the Bible. Additionally, I want you to have a free 25-part series of Bible reading guides called The Orchard Faith of Jesus Study Guides, which will fast-track your understanding of the Bible. And all you have to do to receive the guides is send me an email with your name, postal address and phone number two, info at theorchardmelbourne.org.au. That is info at theorchardmelbourne.org.au or go to our website, theorchardmelbourne.org.au and go to the tab mark, contact us and follow the prompts and you will have them in no time at all. Well, our time together has ended again far too quickly, but remember this, the truth has nothing to fear from investigation. I'm Rod Anderson. Goodbye for now.